The rumors of my death are not greatly exaggerated. I almost died, but I'm back. And I'm doing React Court. I was going to say I'm playing React Court, but that's not really... Um, it's not really a game. This is real life, right? Hello, everybody, by the way. Um, we're going to get started here. We, it's been probably close to a month since we played it, so I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm looking at, like, most uh, popular posts from the past month. Am I the asshole for not tattooing my stepson's name on my arm with my kids' names? Okay. A little spicy? A little spicy to start, no doubt about that. I'm 36. My wife is 35. Rare um, one-year age difference on Reddit. Doesn't happen that much. He is older, though, so already it's a little problematic. I have two kids with my first marriage, 9M and 7F. I've been married to my wife for four years. We have a 1F daughter. She has an eight-month son from her first marriage. That's got to be eight years, right? They've been married for four years and she has an eight-month-old son from her first marriage. Eight, ma eight male! Eight male! Okay, thank you. I don't necessarily... that. Okay, my mistake. That makes sense. The kids all live with us. My kid's mother has visitations one weekend a month. Her son's dad isn't involved at all. Eight million sons? What is she, like a damn spider? I have the names of my oldest two kids tattooed on my arm. I just recently added the name of my youngest daughter. My wife and I were talking about the tattoo and she asked me if I'll tattoo my stepson's name in the same round as our daughter's. I told her I have no intention of tattooing his name. Sheb was shocked and asked me why. I said I only have the names of my children tattooed. She said I am excluding her son and he is part of this family too. I refused to tattoo his name and proceeded to only tattoo my daughter's name. Wife called me all sorts of things. Am I the asshole? This might surprise you. I'm, I, I love when I have a take and then I look at chat and it's the opposite take just scrolling past. Maybe this is like, um, I mean, I don't want this to spiral into a conversation with higher order implications, but like, I think a tattoo is very much like a personal take. It's, it's your body. It's your skin. I think you're not the asshole for, for in any situation for choosing not to get a tattoo. Even, like, this is taking it to a logical extreme, maybe. But if you had two kids and you only got, like, one of your kids' names tattooed on you, that's probably a little messed up. But also, I mean, it's your body. I think you, you have the choice. Hello. She cried again. Oh, that's okay. And then she will cry, and there's like nothing happening. Yeah. It's okay. She'll be fine. She's, she's got to go through it in order to break the, the separation anxiety to begin with. She's like, mommy, and then she gets distracted, and she, she remembers mommy, and then she goes like, wang. Oh, it's, it's sad, for sure. Oh, my God. But then, honestly, like, so my wife drops my daughter off at, our daughter off at daycare. She cries every single time. When I pick her up, she's having the time of her life. Every time I pick her up, she doesn't notice I'm there for like 30 seconds and she's just with the other kids and they're like, Bee! and then they all like toddle over to this bush and they're like, they do the baby squat where like their feet are flat on the ground and they bend so deep that like their butt is touching the grass and they're all there together going like, B, hello, B, B, hi, B. It's crazy. Like, I, honestly, I think I, I got the easy job picking her up. She's, she is going sumo, ass to grass. Like, it's crazy. Don't make fun of my finger. Anyway, I mean, here's the thing. I think this is one of those things. <clears throat> okay, you know, you jealous, jealous, jealous. I think this is one of those things where, like, is it a little bit of an asshole move um, to not get your stepson's name tattooed on your body? Yes, I think it's a little bit of an asshole move for sure. 
obviously from the perspective of the stepson, it does kind of feel like you're a lesser child than the others in the eyes of your stepdad. However, I think it's one of those situations where like if I if you're the stepdad, I'm kind of like I mean, I have to take the bullet of being a little bit of an asshole in order to maintain my own ability to get the tattoos I choose to get. Like at the end of the day, I think it's a very personal thing. It's not like he's not inviting the stepson out for like, you know, family dinner or something like that because he's not really his son. He's like, you know, he, the tattoo is very personal. It's, it's on your body forever. Obviously, this guy has been divorced once, so he maybe in his head, he's like, well, maybe in like 10 years, we could, uh, <laughs> we could get it tattooed. I don't know. If, if I was asked, would I get the tattoo? I would probably get the tattoo. I probably wouldn't have to be asked, to be honest, to begin with. But I also completely understand like why he wouldn't. That seems reasonable to me. I mean, like, the, most of the time, you should put your own self-interest aside to promote the interest of your family, especially your kids. And that includes your stepkids. But, like, a tattoo is very... I mean, it's a very personal thing. It's not like they're like, hey, can you stop drinking for, like, one day so you can drive your kid to softball practice? They're like, can you put permanent ink on your arm? I, I, I think it's a little prickly, but I can definitely understand their position. I'm going to say not the asshole, to be honest. I know you can get it removed, but like that doesn't that, it hurts, right? I think it hurts. Okay, hold on. I'm, I'm going into the comments. I just want to see what the comments look like here. All right, some of these comments make a pretty good point that I didn't necessarily consider. <laughs> you're the asshole you've been a father figure to him for half his life poor boy will probably be shattered when he realizes you don't actually see him as yours uh you know uh true true that's pretty true have you considered though that a man should have the domain over his own bodily autonomy maybe as the, as the eight-year-old considered that a grown man should have the right to Choose what gets permanently etched into his skin? Has the eight-year-old considered that? I don't know. Same sadly. As a step-parent myself, this speaks volumes for his relationship with the kid and how he views him subconsciously. Not to sound like one of those Redditors, I don't say this lightly. Uh, the, uh, the lie detector test determined that was a damn lie. Th this comment was probably written on the toilet. If I was OP's wife, I'd be doing some hard thinking about how I was going to fix this, and if I couldn't, it would be divorce. I've been the one to question my place in the family, and it hurts and has lasting repercussions on a person's mental health. So now, like, let's flip the script. All of a sudden, you're the stepdad in this situation. Uh, your wife comes to you and says, hey, get, our steps, get your stepson's name tattooed on your forearm, or we're getting a divorce. The most... Probably the most insane ultimatum I've ever heard in my entire life. That being said, I think this, I mean, reading between the lines on this post, this is like a hurt people, hurt people sort of thing, right? This person obviously has experience with this, like as a child that created some trauma. And now that has become something for them that is like a, a, a pressure point where if, they, if it happened to them as an adult, they would be like, I'm going to blow up my whole life because of this. So I, I, I guess I understand. My husband's in his 40s, only recently opened up about how it hurt that his stepdad treated him differently than his half-brothers. Bro half this could cause a lifetime of pain. This is called parental differential treatment. There are studies about how harmful it is. Please look this up and understand you're the asshole. When you married your wife, you became that boy's dad. User received gold for this post, by the way. You became that boy's dad. What you were doing now is actively harming him. So allow me to play the devil's advocate here. I think you could be... I understand the philosophy, but I think you could be a great dad and stepdad and treat your stepchild the exact same way that you treat your other children, but just not get the tattoo on your body. 
Like, I don't think those are mutually exclusive. You, you don't have to get a tattoo of your child's name, biological or otherwise, to be like a good dad. The kid doesn't have to know that his name's not tattooed on his stepdad, okay? The dad could just wear long sleeve shirts for like the next, I don't know, like, well, not even that long. If he wears long sleeve shirts for five years, then his stepson will be 13. And then his stepson will be like, wow, it would be really cringe. Dad, stepdad, it's so cringe that you got my name tattooed on you. And then you'd be like, surprise, I didn't. Get owned. We were playing the long con. For a third of your life, I've, I've been setting up this own. How does that feel? I don't know, maybe I'm, like, maybe I'm taking it not seriously enough. But I just feel like you can just be like a good... The, the problem is not that he's not getting the tattoo. The problem is that he's gotten the tattoo with all of his other children's names. Okay, I do, like, I understand that that's the way it's perceived. But I think you could just be, like, a great dad and also not get a tattoo. I don't know. It's not even about the kid. Yeah, it's more about, like, you know, the, the family. Like, isn't there a stat on divorce that's like, okay, 50% of marriages end in divorce? But, like, that it's actually, like, 30% of people get divorced. And then, like, there's some people that get married and divorced, like, eight times that blow up the curve. All I'm saying is this guy has a... He has a predilection towards possibly... Getting divorced again so I can understand why he doesn't want to get the tattoo. That's bad stats. I don't know. I feel like most couples don't get divorced. And then some, uh, like a, a lot do. But then the reason the divorce rate is so high is because everyone knows like one of your uncles is a dentist who's been married seven times, you know? You're like, really? Like you met at a resort last month and you're getting married again this is the eighth new name this is this is aunt linda number eight and you expect me to buy you a toaster a hamilton beach four slice toaster at your eighth wedding are you crazy anyway i don't know that's a prickly one that was a good one to get started on a lot of people uh, disagree and you know what i i mean as long as you're as long as we're all being reasonable Oh, here we go. <clears throat> Am I the asshole for refusing to wear quote-unquote protection at a family gathering? Let me guess. Let me guess what protection is in this context. I'm going to guess that it's a uh, 0.2 millimeter thick uh, cloth mask is my expectation. Maybe I could be wrong. I could be wrong. See, update on my profile. My 18F family gets together every summer in my grandparents' cottage. It's really big house and can accommodate all slash most of the family. This summer has been the first time doing the get-together since COVID. Oh, but I thought you got together every summer. All of, it's all, we're on sentence number three and the whole thing's fallen apart already. Your Honor, motion to dismiss. Everyone has made a huge effort to come as it's a very important tradition. It's my parents' generation, with some as young as their early 30s, and then their kids, one to eight, and finally me and my younger cousin in the middle, who I don't get along with as she's a bit of a brat slash mean towards me. I usually don't mind playing babysitter, but this time I was asked to too much, and I'm afraid refusing might cause permanent damage with my family. I can understand that. You're 18 years old. You don't want to... I, I, and I, I mean this sincerely. You want to look at your phone for six hours and talk to your friends. You don't want to be babysitting a bunch of one to eight year olds all day. Well, like the rest of your family gets uh, hammered on like uh, White Claws and, you know, hard Topo Chico and stuff like that. 
Most of the children are at that age where they're still potty training <clears throat> or still wetting the bed. This runs in my family. Some of the older kids were refusing to put on their nighttime underwear because they were embarrassed to do it with their cousins there. Not all of them wet the bed. So my grandmother decided to avoid, to avoid any embarrassment for the children. They would all wear protection for a few days. So protection in this case is a diaper, like a nighttime diaper. And they would be able to stop wearing it if they did not wet the bed. This is like a battle royale. Last man standing. If you don't piss your pants, you don't have to wear the, the diaper anymore. Okay, so we're at the part of the post where it gets insane. Um, this was all well until my cousin, 15, who sleeps with the kids because she's still considered one, was asked to wear the protection too to set a good example for the children. I did not see anything wrong with this. Okay, I'm going to stop you right there. Asking a 15-year-old to wear a nighttime diaper... To show solidarity with children who are one to eight is, is insane. This is legit a fetish scenario post? I don't know if something's wrong with you or if something's wrong with the internet. Maybe so. I, I want to believe that it's not, okay? It's both? Because I, I do think there's a lot of like false positives. People will be like, I got my, the head of my dick hit with a sledgehammer. Should I go to the hospital? People are like, this is fake. It's a fetish post. Lots of people out there love having the tip of their dick smashed with a sledgehammer. And I'm like, I don't think so. But I don't know. This might, be, this might not be a false positive. I'm going to continue reading it and we'll pull the, hit the eject button if it turns into something even more disgusting. But anyway. Anyway, like this is just to where we're at in the post. Yeah, it's not good to force a teenager to wear a, a diaper to go to bed. The thing with, okay, so one to eight year old kids are like, um, oh, I don't want to wear the diaper unless our cousin wears it. Okay, sorry, you're six. So you're going to wear the diaper. I don't know what you want. Did, welcome to real life. Like when, when you're one to eight years old, you're not calling the shots. If you were calling the shots, the world would be even more fucked up than it already is. Sometimes you got to do what you're told. Yeah, be mad. Okay, cry it out. Who cares? Anyway, she did not like having to wear the bedwetting diaper and thought she was too old for that. My grandmother reminded her that I wet my bed until I was 16, so she's not too old. Okay, so now because one of my other family members wet the bed, now I gotta wear a diaper? Catching strays for no reason at all? She argued that if she, who had not wet the bed in over 10... In 10 years?! She who has not wet the bed in over 10 years had to wear the underwear, then so should I because I only stopped bedwetting a couple of... Oh, I'm out of here, man. This just doesn't sound right. I'm not even suggesting it's a fetish post. It's just, I don't know. It just doesn't sound right. Something's not right. I'm glad that one weekend a year these people are all hanging out together and they're not in gen pop with the rest of us. I would love for you to tell me what weekend that is so I feel more comfortable going outside. I don't want to read anything else you ever write for the rest of your entire life. Am I the asshole for pretending a movie trilogy is a TV series to my girlfriend who hates movies? I don't even really understand this, but I'm, it, it sounds so innocuous as to be hilarious. Some Am I the Assholes are like, I shot my girlfriend in the leg. Am I the asshole? And some of them are like, I uh, forgot to use my signal light once. Am I the asshole? Both could be make you the asshole, but I, I, I have a pension for both of them, quite frankly. I like the innocuous ones. Like the one where they, uh, they eat each other's shredded cheese. And they're like about to break up over it. I love those. So my girlfriend hates movies for some reason, but really loves to binge TV shows like crazy. She's a big fan of sci-fi and even time travel. Holy cow, even time travel? She's an advanced sci-fi viewer. Like Doctor Who, for example, big fan. However, apparently she's never heard of Back to the Future. I mean, this is like the most... This is more fake than the last post. You never, never seen is one thing, but you've never heard of Back to the Future. And your girlfriend is 
older than, you know, 18 years old, presumably. I just, I don't know. I'd be surprised. Advanced sci-fi viewer, never heard of Back to the Future. She loves time travel, by the way. Never heard of Back to... I mean, it's possible, but... I tried to watch Looper with her, but she immediately dismissed it because it's a movie. So since I'm a bit... It's just a very funny sentence. So since I'm a big fan of Back to the Future, I told her it's a TV series. I've got the trilogy digitally and spent all night trimming it down to like 40 minute snippets with as reasonable points to cut at, like just after the first travel back. Holy cow, that's so funny. You think he edited like the Netflix sting into the front of it? Like the... That's actually amazing. I overlay to be continued and added credits at the end. She's used to Netflix skipping the intro to shows, so I didn't have to bother with that. The credits were cut short as well. We binge the entire thing in a day. Well, it's like it's two hours long. I gotta know, dude. Like, is this guy, he's got like a supercomputer in his house or something too? This seems like it, this seems like he was doing a lot of rendering. They watch all three movies? It, okay, that's crazy. We binged the entire thing in a day. She absolutely loved it. Although she complained about some of the episode endings because they felt off. Yeah, I wonder why. Afterwards, I told her why it felt off because it's actually three movies and not a TV show. But I'm glad she liked it regardless. She wasn't having it. After calling me a liar and asshole for betraying her like that, she stormed off to go home instead of staying the night as was planned. I mean, yeah, I did lie to her, but personally, I don't see it as that bad. So am I the asshole? We talked over lunch break. Over lunch break? What the hell? Over lunch break? How old are you? Or do you, are you co-workers? Maybe they're co-workers? We talked over lunch break and everything's fine. I apologized to her again for tricking her and said I didn't mean to upset her. I just wanted to share this movie I love with her. As some comments said, she felt belittled and like I made fun of her. She apologized for overreacting as she realized it came from a place of care and good intentions, even if they were selfish. She wants more communication in the future, though. She didn't lose trust in me, and she doesn't think I'm having malicious intent with her either. We're gonna watch Looper tonight! Bad chest! Bad chest! Looper! Mom says we can watch Looper tonight. I do, I have to, um, how, it, it's so funny how overblown the conversation to reconcile was versus the actual offense in the first place. She wants more communication in the future, though. Bro, you just, you edited Back to the Future into a TV show. You, you put a little splice in every 40 minutes and then told her it was a TV show. It's not like, uh, you don't have to blow up the whole relationship for that. This is just, this is just funny. This is just a funny post, assuming it's real. I, I don't even have, like, I, I don't have anything else to say. The thing that's really funny is that it's such a minor thing. To blow up into a real fight is hilarious. He splice Looper in the YouTube shorts. Yeah, dude, if he wants, what he should actually do. Oh, my girlfriend, uh, she doesn't like TV shows or movies because she only watches TikTok. Well, I really like The Irishman. So I edited it down to a 543 30 second chunks and edit it into portrait style like it was taken from a cell phone. And then I showed them all to her in a playlist called um, Amazing TikTok Saga about old mobsters. Hashtag LOL. Anyway, maybe we lost our way on the bit there a little bit. That's very funny though. I like that. Am I the asshole for not wanting my female best friend to move out once I get married? <clears throat> this one has no verdict, by the way. No, never mind. It's 65% you're the asshole. 
uh, it says not enough info, but then the, the comments tell the real story. I love that. You won't believe what Brad Pitt found inside of the box. Think David Fincher is only known for the ultimate girl boss movie, Gone Girl? You're wrong. 75 years ago in 1995, he made a thriller based on the Bible called Seven. At the end of the movie, there's a classic scene. You may have seen meme reaction images of a young Brad Pitt in his first starring role saying, what's in the box? Turned out it was Pepper Potts' head. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you with more movie spoilers tomorrow. Don't bad chess Seven. Seven's a good movie. Kevin Spacey's in it, but he plays uh, he plays a bad guy. So it's okay, because he is a bad guy. If Kevin Spacey was playing a hero, I would be like, this movie's fucked up to watch. But Kevin Spacey's playing a psychopath. I'm like, holy shit. He wasn't acting. Am I the asshole for not wanting my female best friend to move out once I get married? I know this sounds a little weird, but I'm in such a strange position right now, and I genuinely have no idea what to do. So me, 32 male, I, unique, I'm 33, so I got a little extra wisdom, but I can put myself in your shoes. And my best friend, Sam, 32F, have been living together for five years now. Originally, it was supposed to be a temporary situation because of some health issues she was having. We, we decided she was permanently going to move in with me when we found out her health wasn't going to get better. Okay, now is the inevitably is the part where now I'm an asshole because I thought it was just going to be uh, we just like each other's company, but she's schizophrenic and blind along with having a various other medical issues, so a lot of daily tasks are difficult for her. Our arrangement is I cook, clean, and drive and do other things while she pays for all of our shared living expenses. He was right. He's in a strange position. He does kind of have... He, this is really like a... He's kind of like a caretaker. They're, I mean, they can still be friends, but like... But he has like a job. This honestly has been a dream situation for us. It allows me to do my dream job for which pay is... So you have a job and a job. You're, two, you're a two-job Andy. I don't know. I, I got to keep reading. I'm getting sidetracked too easily. It allows me to do my dream job while she lives a pretty normal independent life and gets support with her house, house issue, health issues. Plus, she never has to do housework. Plus two. I met my girlfriend three years ago. Sam and Emma were never super close, but they were always friendly, and Emma was super understanding of our living situation and never mentioned having a problem with it to me. Recently, we started talking about getting married and moving in together. While we were discussing it, I mentioned I didn't know what would happen to Sam once we got married. Emma got kind of irritated and said Sam would just move out and get her own place finally. I reminded her it wasn't that simple, but we started fighting, and I asked to change the subject. It came up again when Emma said something about moving into my apartment. Hold on, I got to scroll here. And I told her we couldn't because it was Sam's apartment, not mine, and I'd never be able to afford the rent. Okay. We started fighting again. I said Sam could never live by herself, and I wasn't sure I could get married if it meant I had to leave her alone. Emma said she needed space to think and drove away. A couple hours later, she texts me and basically says I can keep having an emotional affair with, Sam of, uh, affair with Sam if I want, but she won't put up with it anymore. She doesn't want to talk to me for a week, and then after that, we can talk about if we want to be together. I'm seriously so lost and conflicted. Emma never expressed these opinions before. I want to be with Emma and live with her, but I can't just kick Sam out on the side of the road either. I'd absolutely be willing to live Sam if she found another arrangement that worked for her, but I might be the asshole for not being willing to leave Sam without a new caretaker to marry Emma. Hey! Buddy, you are, you are fucked. Your life is a damn like powder keg right now i don't even is there like a uh uh like you have my sympathy 
YHMS, YHMS, I mean, I definitely think it's not unreasonable for a person to assume that once they got married, they would live together, um, like, alone, together alone, you know what I mean? Uh, that seems pretty, pretty normal, kind of a normie take. It, assuming this post is real, which we got to do to begin with, I can also understand being like, you know, hey, I can't just leave my friend who is dependent on me. Um, at the same, I don't know, like without being too much of an asshole myself, I guess, what did you think was going to happen? Like, were you gonna, you're gonna keep this arrangement up for, like, the next 50 years until one of you dies? At some point, you gotta, like, you know, I mean, with, again, this is, like, a little, maybe, forehead. At some point, Sam has to be in charge of her own caretaking, right? Like, or, or... Like, I don't think you could reasonably just be like, oh, my long-term plan is to just keep paying all of the living expenses for this guy and he'll be the caretaker for me. That doesn't seem like a stable long-term plan. Maybe he could marry both. I'm not saying get over, you know, your blindness. I'm just saying at some point, it's like, I mean, like, this guy is not, like, he's not a caretaker. Maybe maybe I'm oversimplifying, but I feel like he's just, like, a guy. He's not, like, a, you know, like, a, a professional nurse or, a, you know, somebody who's equipped to handle these issues I, I think he's just like a friend it seems like he this is a situation that has a long-term chance for like disequilibrium to begin with is he the is he the asshole I don't know I don't think he's an asshole necessarily I think he's being an asshole to his uh fiance a little bit by assuming that nothing about their situation would ever have to change and they would just get married and live as normal. But I think he's being very nice and concerned with the well-being of his friend. So, I don't know, does that cancel out? Or does it, is he both? Is he existing in like a quantum superposition of like being the asshole and being the not the asshole at the same time? Read the edit? Okay. You guys are right. It's dumb for me to try to hide this from Sam. She'd probably want to know what's going on. Lastly, okay, my pay isn't great, including my savings and Emma's job too. We could get married and be fine financially without Sam's money. Emma knew our financial arrangement this whole time. It's no surprise to her. Lastly, I made it clear that while I'm hesitant to leave Sam, it's not because I like the money and the lifestyle she provides. This is 100% 100% about what's best for Sam. Me and Sam will talk about it in a few hours and I'll update then. So that was a damn lie. This post was 23 days ago. No update. Emma definitely killed him. We need to get the true crime community on this one right now. We need... Where is user slash dangerous ad 5075? We need to find this information. I don't know. This post... This... I don't know. I feel like this is... I, I'm going to start doing this anytime a post has... Uh, controversy associated with it i'm just gonna say that it feels fake anyway so i don't need to weigh in i don't need to weigh in i don't know that's honestly just reading this post and this is a very selfish thing for me to say reading this post made me exhausted it sounds like your life is very exhausting right now and i fucking feel for you because that's a horrible situation i'm not even saying it's your fault you're in the situation i'm just saying like you know it sounds like every day is a damn minefield, so I wish you the best and I hope you get through it. What is you have what is YHMS? That's you have my sympathy. Am I the asshole for getting upset at my sister after she upstaged my bad news with good news? 
Is this like how I keep saying I almost died and then people are like, hey, I had my job interview called me back. I got the job. Thanks, NL. And I'm like, I almost died. How dare you have good news when I almost died? Am I the asshole for getting upset at my sister after she upstaged my bad news with her good news? So to start off, I'm F21. My sister, Sabrina. I noticed you did not hesitate to drop your sister's name immediately and maintain your own anonymity. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. You might have made it up to begin with, but you, you, you didn't even give yourself a pseudonym. We're not particularly close, but we always got along. I was always closer to my brothers. Rare semicolon spotted in the wild. You are the asshole. She was closer to our parents. However, Sabrina lives very close to my college, so we've hung out a bit more in the past few months. Sabrina has a 10-year-old son, Isaac, from a previous relationship. He left after she told him she was pregnant. Okay? Isaac is autistic and nonverbal, but a sweet kid. A few days ago, it was his 10th birthday, and my sister basically invited our whole family to come, myself included. She is extremely proud of Isaac and documents, describes to us his every move. Everything is another first. A few weeks before the party, Isaac said his first word. Obviously, my sister documented and told everyone. We were all very excited. He has said a couple more leading up to the party, even saying my name when I was out to dinner with him and his mother. I was thrilled. Okay, and then this is the turn. I was thrilled... But a few weeks ago as well, I found that I was pregnant with my long... Oh, my God. No, 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 no. I can't read it. It's fake. Fake post. Get me out of here, man. What happened to Am I the Asshole? It used to be like, am I the asshole for eating all the fully loaded nachos? Now every single one is like me. Um, I got hit with a syphilitic cannonball back in the 1700s and my chest cavities caved in on itself my girlfriend uh has been possessed by the ghost of an angry demon and we're trying to decide what restaurant to go to like it's just what happened to the now every single one is like hey um uh just so you know um my sister has a lot of problems and i told her to shut up by the way i also have a lot of problems what the, what is go, what happened to just the, the sh, we need to go back to the shredded cheese post. You know what it is, man? I'm not I'm not going to any more posts where the username is like adjective underscore verb underscore four digit number. You you fucking liars! You creative writing Andes. I'm not going to any more default usernames. Look, how, how about this one? Throw away rioting. That's a real human being that made this post, okay? I can at least get... I, I don't know if this is going to be real, but I can at least look at it. Am I the asshole for confronting my brother for pointing out my boyfriend isn't actually my husband? Okay, let's see. Let's see. It is a... I expect people to make throwaways, okay? I'm just saying not default Reddit username throwaways. This is not adjective verb, thankfully. So I've been with my boyfriend for over 13 years, but boyfriend sounds really high school after everything we've been through, so I call him my husband and ask that my family does too. As a married person, I give you my permission to do that because who cares? Who gives a shit at all? I'm honestly just not that interested in your life. If you want to call your... Your boyfriend of 13 years, your husband, I honestly don't care. Oh, you didn't go through a day where you stand in front of a bunch of people and fucking repeat after some guy at the front. Nobody cares. Okay? I mean, some people probably care. Also, I, and this is an aside, but like, I don't know how it is in, in the rest of the world, but in Canada, common law is, is fucking crazy. Like, I, I, if you live with someone for, like, two years, you're legally married. I think I was legally married to, like, six people simultaneously in college. Just because I had roommates that, that I, you know, moved around with. Like, I, I, I think technically... Oh, you have to file for it? I don't think so, because I, I thought I... I mean, this is, like, in 2004 or something like that. 
when I learned about it in like high school. But like, if I, I we were basically told like if you live with somebody for two years, they can basically hit you with like a divorce settlement. They could, I mean, I'm not saying that like if you lived with your friend as a roommate, your roommate could like fake divorce you. But I think if you lived with like a, a, a you know, a partner, a romantic partner, and then you broke up, I think that your partner could go to a lawyer and be like, we're, we were common law married, because you get common law married by default in Canada. Like it just happens after two years or three years. And you, you're entitled to some kind of... Uh, like benefits as a result at least in ontario it's one year in ontario that's crazy oh three years one if you have a kid together no i didn't sleep with my roommates they're all engineers yuck anyway um okay so I'm I'm okay with with her saying they're married for the record. As somebody who's who's married, I don't it's not like a we're not a protected class. Husbands and wives, go ahead. It, I I honestly if you've been with someone for 13 years, you're fucking married as far as I'm concerned. Like you're it's not like your relationship is any less legitimate than somebody who met their spouse six months ago and then got married in Las Vegas or something like that. Who cares? All right. So yesterday we had an early fought. I mean, like, I feel like, I, sorry for getting uh, stunlocked over and over by myself, but like the only reason I feel like you would get married after 13 years of being in a relationship together is so that you didn't have to have the conversation every time you met new people. You would just be like, oh, we should just fucking like spend 35 grand on a wedding just so we never have to be like, well, we just don't believe in the institution so much, you know? Like, at that point, you would just do it to, to never have to have the, the talk again. But anyway. So yesterday, we had an early Father's Day get-together at my mom's house, and I brought a Father's Day gift for each my stepdad and my two brothers. When we were doing the gifts, one of my brothers casually handed my husband the gift, and everyone stopped their own convos started paying attention to them. My husband looked confused because we don't have any kids. My brother says in front of everyone, every time, dude, come on. My brother says in front of everyone, I know y'all miscarried, so maybe you're not celebrating it, but I know how excited you were and I think you would have been awesome at it. You might be an illegitimate brother-in-law, but you would have made a great dad. There's ab this never happened. There is nobody on earth that would do this, that would give you a gift for Father's Day after you went through this traumatic experience. And then while giving you the gift was also like, oh, by the way, you're not really married to my sister. It's, this is idiotic, man. What happened to this subreddit? These are, these are the filtered posts. This is an embarrassment. Am I, the, what is, am I the asshole for not saving my girlfriend's son when he was pinned under a bench press? What the hell? Season, season two, Breaking Bad. All you had to do was lift the damn bar, man. Jesse! I don't care if this one's fake. At least there's probably not like a traumatic uh, experience in this. I hope. At least this is probably just physical injury. 